All right, folks, I feel like we better get started. We don't have a lot of time. I'm John. Uh, I live up on Cliff Street. I'm just volunteering tonight to help out. And our task this evening, just to try to clarify that a little bit with these breakout sessions, is uh, we are going to develop sort of two lists. One is a list of actions that we think should be taken in this area of work, and then resources that are needed to move, to move those actions forward. And just to remind folks, so everybody is uh, hopefully in the right room, uh, my understanding is that we are talking about uh, investing in an adaptive downtown. Do we all agree that that's what we're here for? Uh, okay, that's good, first step, check. Um, so I th actually think before we start, it would be great if somebody would go ahead and read again that description, just so that we all have it fresh in our minds. Is there a volunteer who wants to read that for us? Yeah, go for it. To invest in an adaptive downtown. With more flood cycling in the downtown floodplain, Montpelier should do everything possible to protect public and private property, homes, stores, and downtown buildings. Currently, steps for building hardening, elevating buildings, appliances, and inventories, mitigating impacts, and adapting in the downtown, and <coughs> options for moving some businesses and inventory space are being led by individual homeowners, merchants, and building owners who often lack access to public funding resources and or the capacity to navigate the existing financing options. The task force could gather and share best practices, raise money to help businesses afford transitions, and work to leverage resources like those of Efficiency Vermont to replace appliances and home and business utilities. All right. So um, we're gonna spend, uh, we've got 30 minutes total. We're gonna spend about 15 to 20 minutes thinking through some potential actions. And uh, I think this may be too hard, but maybe trying to decide on a couple that really rise to the top as key things to focus on. And then for the last 10 minutes, we'll think about resources. You know, what, what this is not as a group, just to be clear is, as was talked about before, there is now this commission that's gonna to convene to really work and support a lot of this. I think what we heard is the goal is to hire somebody to sort of lead those efforts. And so this group, I think you all may well be involved in that effort. You may well want to be involved in the effort to sort of do this task of investing in an adaptive downtown. But like this probably isn't the task force right, tonight, that's gonna set another meeting date, right? But, the, but what this will be is input that, uh, that the commission then uses, and there may well be further con convenings of, of, of people to do, to do this work. So are there any sort of questions before we just sort of launch into what are some potential action steps in this area? And it's Matt, right? Yes. Matt, your role, you work for the city in what role? Uh, I'm the Communications Development Coordinator for Community Services. Awesome. Matt is our scribe tonight, so uh, that's great. These notes will get transmitted. I may do some scribbling on the board. I may not. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So I guess with that, what are some potential areas of action when we think about this uh, overall theme? Go for it. Well, I would say defining what we mean by an adaptive downtown and bringing the expertise to help us identify what are the works for Montpelier, what are the threats we face, what are the obstacles to successfully facing those threats. It's, it's probably engineering teams, those types of people. So those experts, just to see if I understand what you mean, those experts would help to define sort of what the adaptions are addressing. Is that is that what you're getting at? Yes. Okay, great. Other areas of action? Yeah. I think the obvious is that one of the major threats is water. Um, I'm sure there's other threats that we can come up with, but at the moment, that's what I'm focused on. And <clears throat> I have some vague image of, of an elevated downtown. And so I'm, I'm not sure exactly 
what that means or how that would be facilitated or whether it's even vaguely possible. But it seems like that uh, part of that vi vision is that it would be um, almost like a park-like adaptation of the downtown in a way that would allow the river to be the river, but that the downtown could still stay where it is. And, and it could be a, a demonstration uh, for other similar locations. I don't know how that so fits. somehow elevating yeah. uh, out of what, what harm's is, way. Work businesses mm -hmm. and, and housing. Just a clarification, because I think it's helpful. Like, do, like one scenario is fill basements, like essentially eliminate basements in downtown buildings, and uh, maybe sort of like move inventory to the second floor. Let's say, does that meet your definition of elevating downtown, or are you thinking more ambitiously in the actually physically sort of? I just well, think I'm it's. Not, I'm not talking about a fill. I'm okay. Stilts or whatever you envision, whatever okay. engineering wise works to actually, but to you know, have ele there's elevated highways, there's elevated walkways everywhere. Uh -huh. So, move businesses to the second floor. I don't know about filling basements, okay. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I don't either, but I'm just sort <clears> of trying to get a sense of hydraulic sense. But yeah, yeah, so uh, there's a few uh, of mine. One is uh, everywhere we've got parking lots. You know, some of them are necessary. We need, some, we need a place to put vehicles. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity, I think, to reconsider those spaces as green stormwater infrastructure and provide areas for the river to flow into um, when it overrides its banks um, and capture and even consider some of our, you know, the sediment path uh, as, as part of that. Um, so more green stormwater infrastructure and park spaces downtown that can capture that where it makes sense. And if that means parking downtown is harder or you now, God forbid, you have to walk three blocks to get downtown. You gotta walk three blocks to get downtown. To do that. So that's one. I got more ideas. So repurpose parking essentially to, to perform yeah, that. You know, un underutilized and previous areas, which is often parking lots okay. into green stormwater infrastructure. I'm just trying to write some, because maybe we'll prioritize. You had your hand. So um, I was thinking about if we talk about elevation, I would personally have been on a second floor um, business off and on a church three years ago, they did not feel your, it's not an easy floor to be on, it just doesn't work in the city. I mean, it does with a lot of questions. So with the elevation, I would say, like getting help with the businesses that we have now downtown to have shelves around the perimeter of the business so that in that moment that we get that calling, we can like lift things up quickly. And also I think that putting sand in the basement would actually absorb some of the water to stop it from coming up. But um, I would say work on the space that we have now and create through teamwork possibilities of where we can put things in that moment. So I'm just gonna say sort of actions in existing space. Which seems to be a little different from Elevate. Okay. Another uh, here, then here, then there. Yeah. There are plenty of tried and true methodologies for both floodproof and innovative buildings and so on. So we need to embrace all of those. There's a big difference between the two. The parking lot idea is a brilliant idea, but uh, pretty much our river borders paid services for the most part. So the whole idea of having a green river. Then the other one, you know, the resilient the both resilient and foot, there's both short and long term. That's really you know, what gets in favor of the defenses. But now there are businesses that are struggling just to get up and find them. They really don't have time to think of the long term necessarily. So we we have to come up with both short term and long term solutions for both foot moving and defense. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, and one way to think about that is something called wet flood proofing, where basically we're providing hardening to the existing buildings rather than elevating them per se. And there are all kinds of methodologies to be able to do that. But one of those includes building basements. Can you further define hardening? Yeah, basically providing a, a barrier on the outside of the buildings that would 
exist water up to at least the base flood elevation, if not higher, mm -hmm. and create and using flood gates. Like so, like the MT MT bank example, right? Yeah, there was the flood gate yeah. bank. Yeah, flood, flood gate. Yeah, which okay. They have for yeah. We did that at the boiler plant also. Oh, at the boiler plant. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, so it doesn't always. Uh, go ahead. And just to piggyback on this, we had more parking properties in that space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, are you suggesting specifically a parking garage is an alternative to so much impervious space because you're going up? as opposed to, okay. Uh, I'm gonna get some new voices in before we go back, so yeah. Just building on a long-term theme that someone else mentioned, like, I would love to see us do everything we can to address mitigation with, within this. And so for example, if, if businesses and downtown structures lost their heating systems, can we do everything possible to make sure they transition off a of fossil fuel when they rebuild, you know? So just thinking about that, embedding that in the resilience and recovery process. So when you say mitigation, what you mean is sort of addressing the root cause. Climate mitigation. Climate mitigation is what you really mean. Okay. I'm just going to sort of write that as the, okay. Thank you. Uh, you and then you. Well, what, I'm not a business owner, so I'm talking from what I see. But it seems to me that it, among the leaks of this was just inventory. Because inventory was being stored in basements. Can, this, can the city and, and real estate agents and real estate owners can we come to some kind of alternative to a storage system for inventory that is accessible, accessible to have, not to have elevators, but also not using the low grade? Um, and, some kind of, it would have to be a separate building. And that's that's a problem for merchants, I know. Well, I have that in my inventory. Are you willing to come back tomorrow when I can bring it? How much, how much can be stored? How much has to be um, put, put out for? Accessible, right. right. And how would you manage that kind of uh, storage, basically a warehouse? Mm -hmm. As a shared, are you thinking yeah, of it as a shared, a shared resource? Okay, great. Yeah. And I have two things. One is building off of what you said about um, the kind of the shelf concept. Uh, something that was mentioned in the weeks after the flood was um, creating something like shelves that, you know, you have, you have, think about the, the hurricanes, the buildings in the south where you cover windows with, dope, with boards and you lock them down. Something like that for shelving, but that moves. Um, so you can literally just close up shelves and drag them, put them on, you know, so they're on um, wheels and you can drag them out and into higher ground. That was one, a 13 year old idea. Um, and I just want to bring back something that I mentioned on the, um, on the floor was reimagining our schools. We really need to think differently about, um, we have very, a very, very small schools in Montpelier and we have a lot more population that we can um, uh, join together with um, to think differently about our buildings. Uh, Nathan, yeah, and then, yeah, Nathan, yeah. Um, thinking to me about the idea of a parking garage which is stacking, the more density the better. And I think if we can find a way to uh, concentrate housing outside of the flood level and then recognize that the real, um, retail spaces and the walkable downtown is a premium, and if we can accomplish the sort of flood hardening uh, offsite storage, we can keep people safe, right? If, if this happened in March and people were without heat and then in makeshift housing, we would be really in trouble. So keep people safe. Businesses, I think we can sort of react, help move stuff, put it back. So I, I would like to see us really, really focus on density, uh, allow, you know, allow taller buildings, allow housing without parking in, in more zones, et cetera. I just want to see us, you know, we can draw a line, right? We know, we know what the projected flood is. That number might not be real anymore. We can add three feet to it and just say, let's 
any new housing where we could try to buy out um, in Northfield, bought out low level housing. So that, that just wasn't the threat anymore. And that could become retail space or it could become business space that's where people who lose housing for floods and people like that. So just to be sure I understood, like, do not develop new housing within the floodplain, but have that housing that's outside of the floodplain be higher density. Is that, am I getting that right? It's still close to the core, but I think close to the core. To me, okay. a lot of what defines this community is how walkable it is and how compressed the retail and you know, eating and the experience part of it. And so let's let this, that core be that and adopt some of Greg and Barbara are saying about acknowledge that we're going to flood again over and over. Let's build for it and let's you know, make it a quick recovery. Uh, you, uh, and then you, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So I, I completely agree it's going to flood again and we should build for that, but I just want to urge us that we're talking about building an adaptive downtown and we may not just flood. We may have an abundance of snow. We're not that far from the Canadian forest fires and we're surrounded by forests. We could have a forest fire. So I encourage us to broaden our thought as to what we mean by adaptive. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciated like the idea. I don't know exactly how we do that wrapping the buildings and doing that sort of preventative work. Um, I will say I splashed the white up right through the basement before it even like started to go through the right door because we had sandbags like piled that the water was already coming through. So I mean again like those basements really just need to be off limits and filled up with sand and if we could get some funding to do that so that all of the buildings and um, a build with sand that will absorb a lot of the water that won't be coming to our businesses. And I will say um, we were really fortunate because we um, just heard from people how bad it was getting and so we splashed four hours before it really hit. We just got friends in with ladders and drills and put shelves like around the top of splash and we just got it. We had like 30 people, handy boxes, handy boxes. And how they had those shelves in place and they would look beautiful because we would do like art or something. That would be a really great way for businesses to track quickly to get things up and up in those moments. Get what you're saying too, but I have the inquiry. Great. And just to like reiterate, like to come back to it, what you're talking about is actions that you can take in the existing space to sort of really to do what uh, Barbara described as sort of like wet flood proofing, hardening. I mean, some of that's exterior stuff, some of it's interior stuff. Uh, go ahead. So uh, a couple piggyback thoughts. Um, one is that the ideas that Kelly's mentioning and that other people are mentioning require some kind of collaboration to make it possible for all businesses. So it's not just the actions, it's the investment, right? So how do you create the kind of um, you know, collaborative funding structure or that, you know, external investment that enables businesses to adapt? Mm -hmm. I feel like that, I and can I ask a question back, which is, is that collaboration both about funding, so that there's some common sense of where, how we're going to finance it, but is it also about strategies themselves, both, so it's a both sort of information all. and funding, so that there's a common set of practices that are deployed, am I? Yeah, and I just, um, I know we have that commission down there, but, you know, I think you can Lay, lay everything up with the commissioner. You can say, okay, there needs to be, um, you know, a think tank and a money bank for the business, individual businesses mm. to make um, those decisions about the actions. Yeah. Not just, um, not just have it be, you know, each each one to their own devices because that's not equitable. Um, but the other idea of investment that I just want to, because we, I think we're called investing in an adaptive. Invest in adaptive and um, adaptive. Yep. I want to think about not just the concrete needs of the downtown businesses, but also our youth. Investing in our youth as the future of our town and our future of our economy. So that means both creating resources aimed at youth that are flood resilient and disaster resilient 
Um, currently, we have no youth center at all. Um, and also thinking about our schools in an efficient and uh, emergent and regenerative way. So I also would support a collaboration approach to our youth, both youth and education. Okay. Got it. Uh, behind you, Dayton, first, because it's a new voice, yeah, and then you. Go for it. So I'm not quite sure how to frame this. I haven't thought this through. But I would like to hear from business owners, potential business owners, what they would need to make them feel confident in doing business. And I don't, like I say, I, I, I'm not quite sure how to frame it, but my fear is that people won't really have businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Dayton. Yeah. Sure, I'll be real quick. So I think two things that I'm just bringing off that. I think when we talk about adaptive downtown, the, the economic side of it and providing businesses and creating this walkable, dense place that we all want to be is huge, and that really needs to be a focus of it. And one thing I think that we can really look around for is we're not the only city that's flooded, right? There are cities across America that are about our size and bigger, they're smaller. Louisiana, Florida, low lying areas that have flooded numerous times in the last 20 to 30 years. And I think we've learned a lot from those regions, and we should look to best practices, whether that's how to adapt the store or react to a flood, or whether that's building big infrastructure ideas for the city. All right. I um, feel like we should start to actually bring this to a close because we got to think about resources. Um, I guess what I wonder about here is, I, I like I'm given a task, which is in 30 seconds, I need to report out to the big group <laughs> what we've talked about. And what I feel like I hear as a recurring theme kind of fits under this sort of defining a set of actions to do this wet flood proofing and hardening of those existing spaces in, in that downtown core as an emphasis of, of this. And, and I would say to dovetail on what you said, really trying to define not just individual business by business or building by building, but collectively, what do those strategies look like and how do they get financed? Is that, um, I'm seeing a few nodding heads as like that. Uh, yeah, a couple of hands to respond, yeah. Reiterating what the gentleman over here said, as far as short term and long term, I think we really need to. So the time span piece is an important element to that. Yeah. All right, we're getting some reactions, and I see Emily and then Jack go. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just going to say, John, that I, I heard a lot about um, you know, the difference between allowing people to recover and digging more in that short term, you know, the floodgates, that kind of thing. And maybe some of these more longer term um, ideas that you know really responding to the, the climate crisis in how we're um, looking forward. I just wanted to throw you know all those impermeable parking surfaces that we're talking about along the, the water. I think that's really important. A lot of those are owned by the state, and so we're really going to have to figure out a way to um, work collaboratively um, with BGS on that. I, I mean, one thing I, I think about is we all know those, this was a big flood, so lots of places got it affected. But I think someone's the very first thing to do is that, you know, ask the experts. And I love in the short term to like identify those areas downtown that are most at risk and the things that we can do in the immediate future to, um, you know, help those most at risk places. Okay. Uh, Jack? I think this kind of goes without saying, it's a theme that's going through a lot of comments, but I think I want to say it anyway, which is that I think we need to be clear that we are committed to preserving and defending and rebuilding our walkable downtown where it is. It's our downtown, and that's the center of our community, and that's where it should be. That's where it needs to be. Is that a 
point of common rallying? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's I think actually a, a, a worthwhile thing to note. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to make a point that I, I communicated to Evelyn Tripp after the last meeting, which was I heard two different speakers use the same phrase, short term. One said short term, weeks, months. The other said short term, years. Yes. And I, I asked her, I said, for meeting number three, could Paul at the beginning please clarify what you mean by short term? And that didn't happen. So yeah. I'm making that request again. Okay. Yeah, maybe we could ask you, like when you think, you define that for us a little bit. When you think short term, are you thinking a few years or are you thinking sort of in the space of a year? In the space of a year. In the space of a year. So, so it's sort of the immediate. Two weeks. So we could just show up and ask for a going right away. Yeah. You know a lot of those short term solutions run contrary to a long term solution. Yeah. Where are there some conflict? Yeah, yeah. We need to think about things bigger than just hardening our buildings. We also have to think about how we remake our downtown versus a more long term thing, which will make it easier to harden our buildings in the future. Okay, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing we, uh, Quickly, Gretchen, and then quickly, Barbara. Yeah. I just want to say climate mitigation again. That's the long term point. Can right. We build back. Yeah. Yep. Noted, Barbara. Yeah. yeah and as we build back, I mean, we're, we're dedicated to being a net zero community, right? So it's, yeah. Um, but the optimal heating systems may not be what we put in right now. Mm -hmm. So we've got short term, we've got long term. Mm -hmm. Great. And finally, and then we're going to resources. Okay, I'll be quick. I just wanted to say that because we've mostly been down to this zone, and because we're very close, we're on the grid together, we are so committed to being who we are down here. Love our so we're not going away. We're not going away. We're not going away. Yeah. Yeah. Resources. Yeah, resources. Quickly, with four minutes to go. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about it's not like we can just make decisions about everybody downtown. You have individual business owners who don't own their spaces. You have private property owners who have to make infrastructure decisions about how to build back and you have a city. I would love to see a public fund, this is for housing as well, but a public fund that says, okay, Tim Heaney, you're about to redo a bunch of heating plants. We'll give you, we'll underwrite a lot of a really green heating choice uh, with some, you know, some fair deal about getting some of that money back in the future. And you know, if you can collaborate with your, with your business tenant, I mean, I just feel like if I'm a property owner and I'm not flush, Making those decisions in a way that's long term healthy, it can be more expensive. And I would love to have those resources something that we provide collectively. So, some sort of community bank with some defined goals and the resources to put behind those goals. And, and it's collaborative. It needs to be collaborative with the property owners and it needs to be collaborative with the business owners. And knowing that not all property owners will remain the same, not all business owners will remain the same. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, I'm yep, going go. to echo what you just said. We need resources, we need money. Um, often it takes more resources to retrofit the historic buildings that we are oh. into than to build new, and we need to recognize that. Okay, great. Can I just say another one I've heard you all are also talk about is sort of expertise and best practices. That feels like a resource that is also on the list. I just got the frantic look uh, from out in the hall. Uh, are there any last resources to add to this mix? Uh, the state. This, the state, okay, yeah, that's, thank you. State of VT. <laughs> All right. I think watershed management. Yeah. Yep. And I think the good news is that's one of the other ones tonight for sure. So, yep. Okay. Let's wrap with that. Uh, thanks, everybody.